as summer vacation approached, 21 lives were abruptly cut short by a gunman. Those who lost their lives included 19 students and two educators. The shootout occurred at Rob Elementary School in Uvalde, a small, mostly Latino town in South Texas. According to Gun Violence Archive, so far in 2022, there has been at least 531 mass shootings in the US. Highland Park Parade shooting, Uvalde School shooting, Buffalo Grocery Store shooting, and Tulsa, Oklahoma Hospital shooting. This is only a partial list. It seems like the US is becoming an increasingly dangerous nation. It's really hard and it's not gonna go away. And every single time it happens and it will happen again, it brings it all back up. One of the biggest threats to the US today is the rise of homegrown terrorism, especially emerging from far-right extremism. The capital attack of 2021 makes this more pronounced. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas reveals that threats facing the US since 9-11 shifted from foreign terrorism to domestic extremism. I think it is very dangerous and I think it is very harmful and it makes us weaker. According to the data from the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, Domestic terrorism incidents have soared in the US, mostly driven by white supremacists, anti-Muslim and anti-government extremists on the far right. Between 2014 and 2021, the average number of fatalities per year was 31, demonstrating the increasing lethality of terrorism. This is substantially more than the period from 1994 to 2013 when there were only three years in which more than eight individuals were killed in terrorist attacks in the United States. If you look at the situation that has developed over the last decades, you see a deterioration of human rights in the United States. Uh, you see all the violence, you see the racial tensions, uh, you see the anti-immigration uh, uh, mood uh, in, uh, in the uh, official uh, uh, departments and in, among the population, and yes. The rise of far-right extremism stems from a strong sense of frustration and an identity crisis among the white people. And as their financial situation worsens, they feel more marginalized in the society. One of the prevailing conspiracy theories among far-right conservatives is about a great replacement. It believes that the white race is being replaced by people of color. The suspect of the Buffalo shooting, an 18-year-old young man, was a loyal supporter of his theory. The overwhelming majority of his victims were black. The same thing is true with regard to democracy, and you've seen uh, the dissension and the discontent that has existed in the United States over the last one to two years, uh, then uh, showing that people really are not happy with the situation, with the system as it exists today. The US domestic extremism is a result of drastic economic and structural changes. It is also linked to the US government's endless war on terror. After the 9-11 attack, Washington invested enormous efforts and resources in anti-terrorism wars overseas. This took a heavy toll on the domestic economy. Starting from 2001, the US ratcheted up its military spending. This money could have been spent on domestic infrastructure and improving living standards, but that never happened. In the meantime, America's overseas war on terrorism has deepened the bias of white Americans against the Muslim population. Certainly the overseas involvement of the United States involves a type of propaganda campaign against those people who are not seen as American. So this obviously transfers into the American society as well. So we see increased agitation and racism against people who are considered not to be American, who are living in America at the moment. Who is quietly pushing the war and eventually cultivated the far-right forces? These numbers may give the answer. In 2019, 
the total sales of the global top five aerospace and defense companies. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, and General Dynamics reached a whopping $166 billion. Twelve American firms were on the list of the top 25 global defense companies, representing 61% of global arms sales. Among the $2.3 trillion spent in the war in Afghanistan, around 87% went into the pockets of the top five defense contractors. Even in wars in which the US is not directly involved, the biggest gainers are likely to be the US military industrial complex. The steady flow of US military aid to Ukraine is a case in point. The Biden administration has provided more than $17.5 billion as military assistance for Ukraine. It definitely provides the military industrial complex further access to medium and long-term revenue streams. I make no apology for that. And the fact is eventually we will see some benefit in the business over time. Uh, everything that's being shipped into Ukraine today, of course, is coming out of stockpiles either at DOD or uh, from our NATO allies. By founding and lobbying members of Congress, American defense contractors have gained tremendous influence in national policymaking. With the help of senators and representatives they have founded, they obtained more resources to manufacture weapons. Well, what we see in America is the militarization of the police force. Now, the defense industries are highly involved in this, supplying arms, supplying equipment. So the American industri military industrial complex does benefit from increased fears of terrorism domestically within the United States because this presents another market for them to be able to sell into. The US is turning itself into an imperialist military machine. It creates a hotbed for domestic far-right terrorism while sowing the seeds for social division and turmoil. People may face a simmering chronic domestic terror problem but American citizens don't want trauma to become a way of life.